Richard Sherman has never shied away from social issues. In a lengthy interview on the undefeated, Sherman opens up on the racial tension and violence that's plaguing our country. And he asked, was asked if the NFL should be doing more in bringing about social change. Here was his response. I think the league should, but I don't think they will because it doesn't affect their bottom line. It doesn't affect them. And a lot of the owners haven't come from a background where they would have to deal with these types of circumstances. So it's just news to them. They are too far away. But as players, we're really close to it. A majority African-American league with a lot of guys coming from impoverished environments would really feel compelled to speak up. Stephen A., when you read this, what was your reaction? Well, I applaud Richard Sherman just the same way I applauded Charles Barkley. I think that he's absolutely on the money. And if you wrote, if you read his quotes verbatim, uh, what was printed in The Undefeated, who, by the way, are doing an exceptional job thus far, uh, Kevin Morita and all of those guys should be applauded for the job that they're doing with The Undefeated. They're doing an exceptional job. Uh, the fact is, I would applaud uh, uh, Richard Sherman's comments on, on a plethora of levels. Number one, when he talks about NFL owners, let's understand that we may not know all the intricate details about what, exactly what they are and are not doing so it, it's wrong to dissect or try to dissect specifically what they're doing because sometimes they may operate in the dark and there are things they, they may be doing behind the scenes that we may not have educated ourselves about in fairness to the NFL but I think in more fairness to Richard Sherman uh, to basically accentuate and augment uh, his his position when he talks about the owners caring about the bottom line there's no doubt that that's absolutely 100% accurate They've proved it with the whole domestic violence issue, because had it not been for Ray Rice being caught on video, Ray Rice would have gotten a couple of games. That's it. If you recall, Roger Goodell's initial punishment yep. handed down to Ray Rice. And so and, and then the aftermath of Greg Hardy, Greg Hardy would have probably got the four games or two games from the jump, as opposed to the 10 game suspension Roger Goodell gave him before he appealed it um, and ultimately won uh, that case because Roger Goodell tried to retroactively impose a, a punishment against him uh, through a policy that hadn't been implemented at the time that uh, Greg Hardy uh, committed his, tra his egregious transgression. But we say all of that to say that when it was brought to the attention of the NFL, one would argue that they were lax. They were uh, there was a dereliction of duty uh, morally and otherwise on their part until heat was brought to bear. And it was in danger of threatening their bottom line. Same thing with Adrian Peterson and a whole child abuse scandal. So you got all of that going on. The NFL owners have shown a propensity to just concentrate on football and making their money and cashing their checks as opposed to doing what's right from a societal perspective. So we certainly applaud Richard Sherman for pointing that out because he's absolutely accurate. But when he speaks to Black Lives Matter, um, as one other thing before I go to you, Max, that I wanted to read that Richard Sherman said, because I think it's very, very profound and it needs to be stated. Richard Sherman was asked the question, what is your opinion of the Black Lives Matter movement? His exact quote was as follow, according to the undefeated. It's hard to formulate an opinion and generalize because they have several different messages. Some of them are peaceful and understandable, and some of them are very radical and hard to support. Anytime you see people who are saying black lives matter and then saying it's time to kill police, then it is difficult to stand behind that logic. They are generalizing police just like they are asking police not to generalize us. It is very hypocritical. So in that respect, I find it difficult to fully support that movement. I read that quote because if Richard Sherman feels that way, what are a bunch of white billionaire owners in the NFL in concert with the commissioner of the NFL, who also happens to be white? How are they going to feel if Richard Sherman himself and so many others emanating from the black community are thinking along their lines where you understand that lives matter, just like citizens matter, police lives matter, too, because there's a lot of police officers out there that are protecting and serving and doing the right things more than doing the wrong things. How do you juxtapose that? How do you jumble that? If we have that question, then how in God's name can we blame owners and leagues for being reluctant and a bit apprehensive about getting themselves involved in such a, a precarious situation when there are so many questions even even emanating from our own community. These are the kind of things that we need to concern ourselves about. I applaud Richard Sherman for speaking about it. He's a highly intelligent and accomplished individual who went to Stanford, came from the streets of Compton, L.A. Mm -hmm. This brother's got a brain and he, he utilizes it 
very, very effectively, and I appreciate what he had to say. This is why this sh show is going to be a lot of fun to do, Stephen A., because you're leading me to exactly to where I want to go. First of all, Richard Sherman is a really smart guy. Stanford, as you mentioned. Um, he, he's always interesting to listen to. I have a lot of respect for his brain. I think it shows up on the football field. He's big for the position, but I wouldn't say he's the most athletic for the position. But he's absolutely elite because of his brain. On the football field and off the football field, it makes him interesting to listen to. I actually think it shows up in his performance on the field. Uh, I want to bring attention to something else he said, as you just brought up, Stephen A., if he's talking about his, his, his um, hesitance to embrace uh, uh, everything he sees out of the Black Lives Matter movement. Um, I want, and you say, well, okay, imagine what these white billionaire owners are thinking. He also said, I don't think it's the white player's obligation to speak up. He was asked about this directly. I think it would be nice to show some unity within our league. I want to address Richard Sherman and the white players to whom he may be referring, because I really disagree with him there. Now, to your point, Stephen A., yesterday, no, the white players shouldn't speak up if they're unfamiliar with the issue, if they haven't been sensitized to it in a real way or educated about it. But I think in a league that, is, that has the kind of percentage of African-American uh, uh, players, you know, in the labor union, these are their teammates, their friends, their opponents, their peers professionally, that is in, it is incumbent upon white players and Americans generally to sensitize themselves to this issue. And it is absolutely their obligation to speak up, as Dr. Martin Luther King said, an injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. So on the one hand, I think Richard Sherman is being understanding when he says, look, it's not really their obligation. And I think he's probably, although when he comes on the show eventually, again, I'm, I'm sure we'll talk to him about it more directly, but uh, if he does, um, I, I think that's what he really is referring to if they're not sensitized to it, if they don't understand it, etc. But it is their obligation to sensitize themselves, to understand it. It's their moral obligation to do it. And it then becomes absolutely a moral imperative mm -hmm. to speak out against injustice for their peers, for their teammates, for their opponents. Absolutely. As Americans. Well, you're absolutely right, and I appreciate you saying that. I certainly don't disagree with it, but I would say to you that as a black man, we also have certain obligations. And one of those obligations are to listen to folks and their perspective and where they're coming from as well. It's not to say that we don't do it, because there's a lot of us from my community who do do it. However, there are some that tend to get a bit emotional, and as a result, you're not willing to entertain somebody else's perspective and point of view. And dare I say their ignorance. And what I mean by ignorance, ignorance is not a negative word in the context of this particular conversation. There are white individuals out there who have no clue what's going on in the black community. If they come to you as a black person and tell you they don't know, help me understand, it might behoove you to talk to them as opposed to getting in their face and being a bit contentious or rambunctious because they don't understand, because they're ignorant or oblivious to your plight. I'm not saying that that's by and large the case, because obviously I don't know that. There are plenty of black people that can sit up there and have conversation without losing it. But when we see images depicted over the airwaves depict whether it's on television or radio where you see the protests taking place and you see you know television networks with camera crews and, and they're in attendance and you've got folks getting in the people's face looking to get violent just because they may lack a level of understanding how about calming down and taking an opportunity about, to explain yourself so they can understand where you're coming from and they'll be more receptive to helping you? Because remember, Max, do you, during the whole you civil think? rights movement, they have white, if civil rights movement wouldn't have been successful if there weren't white folks out there helping black mm -hmm. folks to get to that point. So we all got to be in it together. And that's the kind of message that we have to perpetuate and disseminate to the masses. Absolutely. And I would say it's also incumbent upon the media. And, and, and it's not even really, yes. this is not even necessarily a moral issue because you know, local news, if it bleeds, it leads. So if there's a disruption in a Black Lives Matter protest, for example, if there are some bad apples or radical apples, where do you think the media attention is going to be? And then as a result of that, it will, it will give the impression as though 
those radical elements are well, a larger percentage of the movement maybe than they actually are and i could understand some sensitivity to that too yeah absolutely absolutely but i would say this about our industry the fourth estate the media this needs to be said as well i don't think you when you when you say it bleed if it bleeds it leads you're going to go where the negative publicity is I don't have a problem with the media going where the, neg the negative publicity is. I have a problem with them going there and then exacerbating the problem even more instead of striving to make it better. Mm -hmm. Because you could go someplace where there's trouble, but your mission could be remedying the problem. And if you can do it that way, that's fine. But on, it, it, particularly in this day and age, and we're seeing it with the whole election process and beyond, we, we are finding ourselves looking at the media and them being more interested in content and ratings than they are in doing something right. Now, that doesn't mean that you sacrifice ratings, because obviously ratings and revenue are what the television and radio business and the communication business, by and large, is about. But you still can be about the business of spewing... You bring up a Good righteousness point. and rightness you, without and, and still go where the negative publicity is so you can get your ratings you can get your revenue and still do what's right you bring and up I a good we, point i think we all need to do a better job of that there's a sense in this country that the that the news media is somehow sanctified and above it all in a certain kind of way and when in bogus. fact they're selling cars and beers just like the rest of us mm -hmm. how about that and Stephen A, to your earlier point, and I'm not saying it's right, I think a lot of people are scared of what they don't know, and that communication is key to hopefully develop some, some understanding and provoke some change there. Correct.